My name is Warren Isaac Barry from Barry Science Lab, and today I'm going to teach a Hooke's Law Lab. And the goal here is to try and not only help you understand Hooke's Law, but also find a connection between Hooke's Law and Newton's second law, f equals ma. In this case, that kx is equal to ma. And in the case of a vertical spring, like the one on the screen here, that, let's make this full screen. In the case of the screen here, that kx is equal to mg. So let's take this off of here, and now let's change this from slow to normal. So let me put this marker in my pocket, because I don't need a marker to execute the simulation. So here we have a ruler. What I'm going to do is slide that ruler over here, and then get the unstretched le length and the resting position of uh, this spring. So now, let's drop a 50 degree mass on there and see what happens. You can see this is the resting length of the spring. What is the resting length of the spring with respect to where it starts out? Because we need to write that down. The resting length of the spring, as shown here, is approximately 48 centimeters. So, resting length is equal to 48 centimeters, or 0.48 meters. N now, what we're going to do is we're going to take the resting length and then slide the zero of the ruler up there. And now, the ruler measures delta x. In this case, the new resting position is this green line, which falls at approximately 8 centimeters from the beginning of the ruler. So that means that our mass in grams here is 50. Our mass in kilograms would be dividing by 1,000, and thus 0 0.05. Our fg would be multiplying by g, which is 10, so that is 0.5 newtons, and our delta x is in meters 0.08 meters, because it's 8 centimeters. Now, let's take this 50 centimeter mass off and drop a 100 centimeter mass on. And you can see that the new resting position is at about six, uh, no, oh, yeah, 16 centimeters. So, we have a 100 grams, uh, m is 0.1 kilogram, because we have to divide 100 by 1,000 to convert from grams to kilograms. mg would be multiplying by g, which is 10, so it's 1 newton, and delta x, as we have seen here, is 16 centimeters, or 0.16 meters. So now, let's drop a 250 gram onto the spring. And now we can see that it has, from the resting length, a delta x of approximately 42 centimeters. So we have mm, 250 grams, which is 0.25 kilograms, and fg would be multiplying by g once again, which is 10, giving us 2.5. And now we have our delta x, which is 0.42. Now let's close the computer and put it away because we're going to be doing our lab now. And we don't need the computer anymore. Before we begin with Hooke's Law, let me show you a spring, the same spring, in three different states. One, two, and three. So, in this state, and this is going to be a vertical spring, which means that it is hanging off from the ceiling. In this state, it is at its resting position. Delta x is zero, because it has not changed from its equilibrium. So, here, delta x is zero, and the velocity is zero as well. It is at rest. Now, we place a mass onto it, and it starts oscillating. So state number two looks like this. Let's say, oh, so we have this mass 
M and putting it on, we see that the it has deviated a length of delta X from its original position. And here, the velocity is actually zero as well because this is its max oscillation. So, at the extremes, the velocity is zero. And now, it oscillates back and the block pushes up against the ceiling, which causes it to look a little something like this. And once again, this is very far from our equilibrium position. And if there was no damping, then you could say that this distance is also the same delta x and the velocity is zero. So now, these are the three states that you will most often see a spring in. And delta x, uh, how far a spring will get stretched out when a certain mass is put on it depends on a quantity called the spring constant, k. Now, Fs, which is the resistive force of a spring when an outside thing like a mass is brought onto it, the resistive force of a spring is equal to k times delta x, where k is the spring constant, which is how stiff something is, a spring is, and delta x, which is how far you stretched it out from our original position. For vertical springs, we're going to see that once uh, this spring has settled uh, uh, to a position of equilibrium, k delta x is going to be equal to the uh, weight of this box. Take a moment to think. Is this delta x over here similar to 1, 2, or 3? And just to clarify, 2 is at a resting position. Take a few seconds to think about that before I reveal the answer. And the answer is number 2. Because, number 1, there is no delta x. Because there is no mass on the spring. And number three, this is not resting position because uh, for horizontal springs, you uh, could have a compressed spring as a resting position, but for vertical springs, you cannot because the only force acting here, uh, the only forces acting here are Fs equals Kx and Mg. You cannot have a spring in a, a resting position uh, which is less than its original height or its original equilibrium position. So now, if this is not in resting position and the delta x that we were measuring in this table was for resting position, number three cannot be the same as this uh, delta x either. That means number two is what we are describing. So now, let's start drawing our graph which will compare delta x to fs. Now you might say, why is delta x here and fs here? Why not the other way around? Well, that's because when we measure the slope of this graph, we have, press. That's uh, because when we measure the slope of this graph, we will do y fs over x, uh, delta x. And since fs is k delta x, that means the slope will give us our spring constant, k. All right, so now let's begin drawing our graph. So you might notice that all of these are even and two of these are multiples of 0 0.08. So let's use that to our advantage, make our increment on the delta, uh, the, on the x-axis 0.8. So we're going to go three grid spaces for this one, 0 0.08 meters. And we're going to go three grid spaces for the next one, 0.16 meters. Again, 0.32, again, 0.40, and finally, 0.48. And we're not going to need any more than that because our greatest value, 0.42, falls in this range. Okay, so now let's draw our y-axis, and you might notice that all of these weights can, are multiples of 0.05. So we're going to use that to our advantage, make our increment here 0.5. So this is 0 0.05, uh, 0 0.5, because actually, uh, remember, 
these delta x's are for our resting position. In our resting position, k delta x must be equal to mz because resting position means the spring is not moving. The spring must be at equilibrium. And if the spring is at equilibrium, these two forces must be equivalent. So, that means that k delta x is equal to mg, and mg is fg, which is this column over here. That means we've got to use the, this column for our calculations instead. instead. So, now, let's start doing that. So, we have 0.5 over here, 1 over here. Mm, 1.5 over here, 2 over here, and 2.05 way on the top. Okay, so now, uh, this says 15, I think, so 1.5. Okay, so now, let's do this. So, our first point is, and let's actually make an XY data table so that we don't mess anything up. So we're just going to make a short little table of our x's and y's. So our first x is going to be 0 0.08, and our first y is going to be 0.5. Our second x is going to be 0.16, and our second y is going to be point, uh, uh, no, not point 0.1. And our third one is going to be 0.42. And our third one for y is going to be 2.5. All right, point 0.8 comma point 0.5, that on this graph is going to be this point. Okay, so now point 0.16 comma 1 is this point right here. And point 0.42 comma 2.5, point 0.42 is a little trickier to find because it's not exactly here, but this is point 0.44 and this is going to be 0.42. So now we just got to take that little speck all the way to 2.5. And those are our three data points. I guess you could say four because of zero, zero, but it doesn't really matter either way. Now let's grab our meter stick and draw a best fit line and try to find the slope of that line. Let's get one above our line, one below our line, and at least a few right on our line. So, let's start from here, and let's see what we can do. Uh, okay. Mm. Okay, this looks like a best fit line, maybe? Yeah, it should be a best fit line. Ta-da! And there we... And there we have it. You can see this is a best fit line because we have one point below, one point above, and one, or I guess two points, right on the line. Okay, so now what we're going to do to try and find the approximate slope of this best fit line is we are going to take two points on this line that fall within the grid, or approximately at least fall within the grid, and find the slope between them. So I had already just spotted one right over here while I was talking, and it's this, and another one that uh, my little eye can spy for is take, for example, uh, this right here on point two four. And let's try to find one more that falls on a grid space. And, oh, there's one right about here at point four. So what is this space at point two four? Well, it's exactly 1.5, which is very convenient. And what is this space right over here? Well, it isn't at an exact y value, but we can approximate what 0.5 over 3 is in our heads. At least I'm sure most of us can. So, we have a 0.4 right here, comma, and now we have a mm, 
two point three. I'm going to say. All right. So now let's take these two points and try and find the slope between them. Y one over x two minus x. Okay. So now. Uh, we know that m is equal to y2 minus y1 or delta y over x2 minus x1. So now, what is our y2? Well, it's the second point right here, which is about 2.3. And what's our y1? This first point, which is 1.5. Over our x2 is going to be 0.4. And our x1 is 0.24. So this actually leads to something convenient because 2.3 minus 1.5 is about 0.8. And dividing that by 0.16 leads us to a very satisfying answer of 5. And if you don't believe me, if you multiply this by 100 on both sides, we get 80 over 16 which is most definitely 5. So now, what does 5 represent? Well, you might have remembered from the beginning of the lecture that I said that m is going to be our change in y, which is our change in fs, I guess, or just fs, over our change in x, or just delta x. And since fs is k delta x, and dividing that by delta x would just give you k, that means that k is 5. and what are the units for k exactly? Well, they're newton per meter, newtons per meter, which basically means that k is essentially the amount of more newtons exerted per each meter that you drag the spring. I'm sure that was not the best explanation I could have given, but it's an all right one. So it's newtons per meter. That means that, wait, but actually, we were, oh no, we were using meters here. So this is a spring strength uh, or spring constant of 5 newton meters, which brings a whole close to our Hooke's Law Lab. I may have just explained this, but, or just as one last question, what does our slope here represent? The force of the spring, the spring constant, or the displacement of the spring from its equilibrium position. I'll leave you to that question. Thank you everybody for- Not leave you, I'll give you a few seconds. And then you're gonna cross that and then put K. I just explained it, man. All right, so after those few seconds, you should have been able to articulate either by rewinding the video we're remembering that this m here represents k, our spring constant. So that is what we've retained from this lesson today. Thank you everybody for watching. We'll see you in the next one.